fucking goddamn orange peel. Motherfucking goddamn orange peel beef. What's up, everybody? How y'all doing? All right, welcome to... One fucking hour live, our first ever live stream. I am Evan Husney, and of course, I'm joined uh, to my left. We got Mr. Tom Fitzgerald. What's going on, T? Big T. Hey, man, I'm live without a net, man. This is it. <laughs> like Van Hagar. Like. 
<laughs> oh my god this is it man live i can't believe we're doing it looking at all the great people in chat what's up yeah everybody? what's How up you doing? everybody i know uh say hello <laughs> to my right we also got of course we got mr marcus herring what's going on marcus what's what's up man i'm, I'm a little nervous because if, if we uh if we uh, if i mess up and i or i start giving a giggle fit we won't be able to go back and edit it out later i like know we, like we often do <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. no post it's like, it's like no uh cutting cutting it yeah. out <laughs> that's right no post no net and of course you know this is our first live stream so if we're seeing any you know we're trying to work out the kinks and everything if you're seeing anything yeah. it's looking a little weird let us know yeah. we'll fix it for too loud if these guys aren't yeah. loud enough right what have you let us know yeah. we're watching the chat what's going on we got matt david koenig we got what do we got? Diana Vinas. What's up? Yeah, Dalton Diana. Anderson in the house. P people from Joey Georgia. Izzo. People from New Zealand. Mm. International. So we huzzah! Inter we got people coming in, uh, dialing in from a Ren Fair, saying huzzah. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> All right. Is that the the lingo? I guess it is. That huzzah. is something they say. Uh, yeah, I went to one today actually. Um, what? And, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I did. Nice. Did lots of huzzahs. Oh. Yeah. yeah that sounds go. very uh, Big Bang Theory you know, kind of a term. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't yeah, know. I just showed up for the turkey opening banter mm -hmm. for our yeah. first yeah. life. This is the show, by the way, everybody. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm just going to um, talk about uh, the Big Bang Theory <laughs> for like 20 minutes. <laughs> All right. Well, tonight's first ever live stream, again, was unlocked because we got 1,000 subscribers on the YouTube channel. So thank you, everybody. Oh. For helping us to get to that point and so here we are giving you the first ever live stream of one fucking hour and uh, let's talk about what tonight is tonight is going to be one fucking hour on a return to one of our favorite formats on the movies we hate part <laughs> i know i too do i call it a night of a thousand hates <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah oh my God. shimmering in the sky Yes. Uh, look, hate is as hate is as valid an emotion as any. That's true. And uh, you know, yep. nothing wrong with exorcising that. Yes. Uh, and uh, and there's and there's no shortage of fodder for mm -hmm. our hate. You know, that's it's just true. a matter of corralling it and and organizing it. That's very and that's true. That's what we're here that's for. Very true. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, look. I mean, no, normally the show is about you know one fucking movie for one fucking hour. But tonight we're getting into several films in this fucking hour. We're still going to be confined to that one hour time limit. And we're going to be mm -hmm. batting forth films that we fucking hate from all different, you know, genres and decades and getting into it. If you haven't seen our first <coughs> Movies We Hate episode, when you're done with this, check the archives. We went back into there, talked about shit like Joker. Whew. Um, what else did we talk about? Uh, Joker. We had Joker was a big one. Yeah, um, blocked it out. It was really yeah, painful. Slog having Dude, to Jesus. all right. Oh, Fisher, cram all those movies. Fisher Requiem King. For a dream. Oh yeah, Requiem for a Dream. Oh, yeah, we yeah. Had some big um, bangers in there. Big banger theory. Uh, um, Heartbreak Kid reboot. That's right. <laughs> From the two thousands. Just right. kidding. With yeah. um, oh, uh, Carlos Mencia. Devil's Rejects. That's right, Justin. Thank you. Right. Um, but let's One just. One of the quickly... worst parts is that you have to actually finish the film. You know what I mean? Like, you yeah. might just hate a film and shut it off, but since you got to, you have to talk about it for like however long, <laughs> you feel compelled to actually yeah. watch the whole thing. So that's right. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It, it, this has been feeling very court appointed, you know, for us. <laughs> These, uh, like, mandatory uh, court appointed uh, viewing. Oh, it's like God. we're in a, on a probation or something like that. Yeah. You know, is, it's just it like, has. oh, now, I, oh, what's next? Oh, this fucking nightmare well, this shitty boring movie great let's make, it, <laughs> let, let's make it clear for the audience i mean we watched all we watched or rewatched all the movies we're gonna be talking right. about tonight so these have all been our head we're just like filled with hate filled to the brim ready to let it explode here um yeah. but real quick just to define what hate is for anybody who's new to the channel or or has not seen our previous episode these aren't movies that are so bad it's good you know, they're not movies we like to just beat up on or laugh at or anything. These are movies that disturb us yeah. and, and harm us emotionally on a deep, profound level. Yeah. Um, Tom put well, it we hate perfectly. Yeah. We hate them. But Tom put it perfectly last episode when he said these are movies that um, we really want to punch in the stomach. Isn't that right? I mean, that's a good. Yeah. I mean, what I mean is I personify uh, the film in my mind or it or it personifies itself to me 
as someone that I meet at like a wedding or like at a bar or like a, a coworker at the cubicle next to me. And I'm like, right. oh, I can't stand this person. Like, you know, I, I cannot do this. <laughs> like, and so the film, you know, becomes, because if you look at it that way, like, um, you know, you can't hang with everybody in life and you're just like, I can't do this person. And to me, it's the film is always, I can't do this person slash movie. I, I can't deal with it. Like, like, I don't want to spend, or, or, or the, well, the thing, I'll just say this and then shut up, but it's like, you know, they've asked, um, well, this, this is helpful, actually. Uh, What's up, George? You know, I, I, we're talking about the opposite of what Lauren Michaels uh, has said. He's been asked, how do you pick your cast members for uh, Saturday Night Live? Okay, mm -hmm. Lauren Michaels, like, what, okay. what's the, how does it work? And he's like, well, it's partly a gut thing. Okay. And I, and I always go, could I go on a, a cross-country road trip with this person? <laughs> okay so if you invert oh. if you invert that like can i go on a cross-country road trip with the fisher king oh you know and then you have your answer like about no. what film you want to select no 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 right I'm just, I was thinking think? it, well i was thinking about some of the movies we're going to talk about tonight and being in a trapped in a car cross country road trip we, anything that film is anything? pretty pretty grim yeah <laughs> So, well, I wouldn't do a road trip with any of these. So, yeah. Yeah, no uh, fucking no. way. <laughs> um, all right. Well, before we get into the show, before we start the clock and, and get into uh, the actual program here, um, last week's episode, we teased that we have a big announcement to unveil tonight. So, I wanted to. Uh, get that across right now. Let's let let's unveil this before we get into it because it's pretty fucking special here on the show. We've been teasing it for a long time, but we have finally done it. I'm going to show it to you guys right now. We have officially launched the one fucking hour Patreon. That's right. We boom. Uh, so boom. Get on there. It's the best way to support the channel. Patreon.com slash one fucking hour. And it's just five bucks a month, or you can uh, you, you can go for the double moment with cheese and do ten bucks a month. But <laughs> this isn't just you know blanket support uh, for the show. It actually right. is going to get you some bonus shit. Uh, this is what we're doing. I'm, we're really excited about this. We are going to be recording feature length audio commentary tracks to movies, um, and we did our first one just the other day. It was a fucking blast. We recorded so an audio, audio commentary track to Texas Chainsaw Massacre from 1974, a movie we fucking love to death. Don't get that twisted. Uh, so if you sign up yep. there, you can download the audio commentary. We're going to be pushing these out basic, you know, one to two a month. Who knows? We're, we're, we're pretty stoked on it right now. And we have a whole lineup yeah. of audio commentaries we're going to do. And yeah. you're also going to get a 24 hour early access to every single episode of the show. So a huge sure. reason to sign up. Five bucks a month. Go ahead right now. Ramey, actually, Ramey, if you're in the chat, can you throw the link in the chat right now if anybody wants to sign up? Uh, Ramey's our executive producer tonight, so <laughs> you could throw that in. That'd <laughs> no. be great. But uh, patreon.com so, slash... No. Sorry, yeah, patreon.com slash one fucking hour. That'd be great. If you sign up, support the show. What were we going to say, Tom? No, just so uh, to be clear, like uh, the commentaries... We'll mm -hmm. try to keep them regular, and we really did have maybe more oh. fun than any of us expected. I'll just speak for myself, <laughs> I but know, I it did was do. it was just it just <laughs> felt like um, you know like a, a duck to water. It was just like oh okay because because we have been doing these hours, yeah, and so it was just like wow, like roll them, get the credits, yeah. and then like let the movie go, and it was just it was just wonderful. I mean, it was Texas Chainsaw Massacre, yes, but I think this could be fun for just about anything. Uh, you know, a, a film that we either love. Uh, to death and you know going on a road trip with or a movie we despise i think that would be equally uh interesting uh, a fun yeah, an interesting rewarding experience to um to, to break apart these films about what's going great or what's going wrong which is what we always do anyway so, yeah yeah exactly. commentaries and you do get advanced what do you say 24 hours before the it usually drops is that what you're saying 24 hours you're going to get uh the episode any of the episodes we do normally right. for youtube or spotify or whatever so, you're you're so going to you get can, those uh, and everybody else yeah you can tell all the kids at, at recess in the playground, like, yeah, man, fucking one fucking hour last night. You didn't hear that? It's, you, know, you can make everybody uh, jealous of you. <laughs> exactly. You know? So I just put the link in the chat. You didn't hear uh, walk about? What? Yeah. Like, get, on yeah, exactly. get on yeah. that. Get on that. Patreon.com slash one fucking hour, five bucks a month or 10 if you like, uh, however you feel. Get there, get your commentary tracks, and we walk, walk you through all the instructions of how to sync them up and all that good shit. Uh, right. But anyway... 
so yeah, that's the best way to support the show. It's going to be a big new side endeavor for the one fucking hour universe. So definitely get there. All right. So, um, all right. Should we start the show guys? I feel like we should do it. Um, let's, let's get into it. the hate. All right. Let's fuck one, it up. <laughs> one fucking hour on the movies. We hate volume. Oh, we're already getting, uh, subscriptions to the Patreon. Thank you so much. Uh, Freddie. Oh, wow. I really yeah, thanks, appreciate guys. that. Thank Killer. you so much. Amazing. Love that. I'll, we'll, uh, I'll, I'm going to call it out live in the air if you sign up right now. Us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So <clears throat> let's let's get the clock started here. Um, boom, yeah. boom. Here oh, God. is Z clock. Yeah. And <clears throat> just before I hit go on this clock, Marcus is going to all Mark, Marcus always starts off with these episodes here. Um, so when I hit uh, go here, Marcus, please tell us your first pick. And boom, Marcus, go ahead. All right. So, uh, yeah, this one's been 30 years in the making this, uh, this, this hate episode on this particular film. I feel kind of bad because it is low hanging fruit. It's an easy punching bag. It's been a long time since I spoke to anybody who actually liked this movie. Okay. However, I did encounter quite a few of them, people who did back in 1994. Uh, okay. I don't know if anyone can guess, but I'm going to spoil it already. Yes, it's Oliver Stone's 1994 film, Natural Born Killers, oh. which uh, is probably my, le- my least hated movie of all time. The Crow, that's a good guess, actually. Uh, um, I see some some guesses in the chat there, but um, The Crow. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, th- this has some the same some of the same problems as The Crow. It's like Oliver Stone's like it's his total fail at making a movie for like the MTV generation kids. You know, it's like yes. he's like trying to make Badlands. <laughs> for like the MTV kids, you know, and um, you know, it's like he's he's doing this sort of really uh, uh, like I remember MTV Sports was big at the time. They would do like all these different like camera textures and angles and stuff. And I feel like he just watched an episode of that and was like, "This, this is what I want," because it's like every film technique in the book. There's like zero restraint. Mm-hmm. There's like cartoonish primary color gels. Uh, then there's black and white. Every single angle in the whole movie is Dutched. Like super yes. eight. There's there's oh. video textures, stock footage of animals fucking. Oh. There's like a, there's like background replacement. You know, like uh, shooting against like a, a like a, a background screen. There's overlays. There's this hor- like really in your face, like trying to be cool soundtrack. There's like a animation, like Ralph Bakshi kind of like animation in it. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Just no restraint. Total kitchen sink. Uh, and then on top of that, it's super trite and superficial. It's like this annoyingly simple Bonnie and Clyde <laughs> Badlands story. It's trying so hard to be like deep and and it's trying so hard to be intense, but the intensity just comes off as like really cringy and and cheap. Um, the soundtrack goes from like Leonard Cohen to like fake cramps to like Patti Smith, Velvet Underground covers, sitcom music like Hollywood score, South African high life, Patsy Klein and reggae. And that's like all in the first 30 minutes. No. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, I mean, so it what's starts the problem. Really, yeah. yeah it's, come on, man. Know, it sound, I'm making it sound good, but it starts really strong. <laughs> like in the hate category, it's like boom, right out of the gate. There's like this embarrassing, like diner yeah. fight scene. Oh, uh, that's set the to L seven shit that's list. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, yeah. Uh, well, and uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, can I throw uh, on I need, this for a minute? Like, yeah, yeah. Please. The thing, the thing is like about about um, natural born killers because we have flirted with this title a lot under the hate <laughs> category. And Oliver Stone, we should mention, is is a favorite to discuss here on the channel. We love, we love talking about. We you know, just did talk radio. a positive take yeah. on one of his movies. We just <laughs> on did talk that. radio. Yeah. <laughs> so we 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 do like we can get down with Oliver Stone, you know, Salvador talk radio. And then we love dunking on him, too, with the doors, you know, when he really starts to age <laughs> out, you know, when his boomerness really starts to age out. And it's really oh, yeah. evident here with NBK, because like one thing just real quick, rewatching it for me, because I did go back and rewatch this. I forgot of I forgot how much of a non movie it really was, and the fact that it was really just like you know obviously super super stylized, but it really is just these little vignettes, right? It's so fucking ADD, yeah. and like the yeah. characters don't have much of an arc. They go from you know being like this, like you said, Badlands, Bonnie and Clyde, like super in love, then to like having problems, you know, and there's nothing in between, mm-hmm. and it's impossible for us to grab onto anything. It's just this fucking, you know, like. Uh, What's that thing you say, Tom, when it's like that kind of like uh, 
you know, you talk about with like Terry Gilliam where he's so like mannered and like, um, you know, he, he, he just can't like, you know, he has to like, there's like busy? This nervous, busy nervousness yeah. where he has to like hit you yeah. with all these it's things. Sweaty. Like, fuck, sweaty. It's sweaty. It's sweaty. It's well, I call it like sweaty tap dancing. Like with two with sparklers in your hands, like hey, hey, did, uh, hey, did, did you blink? Are you still still gonna watch the movie? Are we done? Like, like, do you right. love my movie still? And it's just uh, the neurosis is just bleeding out with like like <laughs> pop sweat, as they call it. And anyway, my take is this, uh, Marcus, amen. Everything you said, it's yep. just I think the thing that's grimly amusing to me is that it is a boomer who like did watch like two hours of MTV in 1989. <laughs> yeah, and just went. This is what everybody does, wants. Yes. This is you what everything is. Yeah. And then it's like, well, just make a two and a half hour movie that's a, a two and a half hour, like, like, like a bad idea of what music videos are. Like, what a right. fake no more video looks like. Well, and um, yeah. so that's ill advised yeah. on paper. And, uh, you know, but also just one little tiny thing is um, this is a big thread with our hate movies is he was king shit of Fuck Mountain at the time. And right. so he could still do anything. He was a little dinged by the doors, but he was still the man who made, <laughs> you know, huge ass movies, Wall Street, yeah. Yeah. Um, Platoon, Born on the Fourth of July and everything. So like uh, what I'm saying, it was just like blank check time from the studios. And, mm -hmm. and, and probably a big thing here with these movies we talk about often are all yes men yes. and no pushback. You know, there's, it's not collaborative. It's just a, it's an indulgence, like you said, Marcus. So <laughs> Sick uh, right. it's, yeah. it's not I mean, fun, case, but it, it is sort of yeah. fascinating to watch. Case in point is like Woody's like bad style, you know, throughout. It's like it's that look was never cool. Like he's got those like those like thrift yeah. store, like gas station, John Lennon, like yeah. red Getty Lee. Sunglasses, kind of like, 90s, like Getty Lee. He's got yeah. like a Getty Lee ponytail and then like a <laughs> leather jacket that doesn't fit right. It's like way uh, too yeah. big. You know? yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, yeah, no, yeah. It's, you, you had me at those those like tiny circular uh, sunglasses. <laughs> and of course, yeah. of course, of course, yeah. it's such a great image. They yeah. lead with all the advertising with that that face, his yeah. visage with those dumb, tiny like circular sunglasses where it's like yeah. ain't i cool with my <laughs> shotgun and it's like yeah yeah you're cool dude you're so cool yeah it's yeah, yeah. well we should Rock get off on. it because of the clock yeah yeah but, moving on yeah, but it's just the last, the, the last thing is it is pure hell great pick marcus it's just like you know he, it, it's oliver stone the boomer thinking you know mtv is the end of the world and so he's making this mm -hmm. really uh just heightened ridiculous you know tone deaf response to all of that right it's super i know what you guys that. want you have no attention span well here yeah, you yeah. go yeah a cut every yeah. three seconds you. Like, it's very cynical it's incredibly cynical yeah. and just annoying or, I, um, I do love that it was so bad that it was disowned by qt you know i do yes. love that <laughs> like yes. he had to be like no got away from he wrote fast. the story yep. yeah he wrote the story <laughs> right all right yeah. good pick marcus okay i'm gonna go to my first tier I teased this one at the end of the last episode. I actually just ran out of time to really get into it. But here we go, guys. Brace yourselves. Let those sphincters unclench. Here we go. Hold on to it's, something. Hold on to something. Punch Drunk Love from 2002. <sighs> by, our <laughs> by our homeboy, Paul Thomas Anderson. Oh, God, this is just for me. It's fucking kryptonite. OK, yeah, like my bad. OK, a lot of this we're talking about our personal hate, right? Like the things yeah. that make us cringe, the things that make us fucking mad. And it might not be the same for everybody. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who like most of the movies we're talking about tonight or some of the movies we're talking about. But for me, it's like that dawn of the early 2000s relentless quirk for quirk's sake you know, with those early 2000s arty flourishes, you know, that don't serve a story, you know, or at all. Like, that just fucking grinds my gears. You know, we've talked about PTA a lot. After Boogie Nights, you know, we, we all love Boogie Nights here. And then, of course, we've sure. turned to town on the epic fail of Magnolia. Uh, on a previous Shout out to our previous episode on that. Might be one of my favorite episodes we've ever done, actually. Classic. Um, but this is PTA into his peak hipster rising phase, okay, where mm -hmm. he is hanging out with the L.A. high art Scientology crowd, you know, Fiona Apple and her gang. And I think this movie is him getting into that. Largo. It, yes, <laughs> this is him, him at the Largo, bumping uh. elbows with all of those people in that crowd and really trying to Im really impress them with this movie to make something – you know, do you, you kind of know what I mean by that? Like, this is kind of like what yeah, I think he, he's trying to get into that 
crowd with this movie. Yes. Um, but another pet peeve of mine, something the early 2000s also just shoved down our fucking throats, like relentlessly, is that nervous, neurotic, impotent leading character. You know, like what what I called like the em- like you know total empty inside core. You know that mm-hmm. maladjusted, insecure, boring, neurotic man sort of central character who's which- two steps away from being an active shooter. It feels like, <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. not. I'm not even trying to make a joke, a cheap yeah, joke. I know. It's just like I, I know. it it is dangerously close to that in that feeling. Go ahead. I know. I'm so over that. I'm just so over that, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. of course, this is just one of the penultimate examples of that. Um, but much like Magnolia, another grading quality that this movie has for me is the fucking loud John Bryan jazz Largo jam session that is playing over the entire fucking movie that is literally in contrast to the fucking dialogue at the whole the whole time. In um, conflict with. It's just, <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you. It doesn't, it doesn't sound like it's work. scored at all. It just sounds no. like it's just just laid in over the top. Yeah, mm. it's like bleeding well in from like next door. Um, but anyway, uh, anyway, yeah. So it's just that precious quirkiness of a fucking man in a bold blue suit having to save a little piano I, from being yeah, run over. I hate his suit. Like, oh, the like, little like, piano. No, but dude, the little piano. It's like, honestly, it's like that's that's the beginning of a film school student script is a guy in a little totally. blue suit trying to totally. save a little piano. Yeah. And totally. like he's the, like a know, plunger salesman, by the way. Like that's what he does for I know, a living. Quirky, is sell, right? Like yeah. novelty plungers. plungers, like with yeah. the oh. like stuff in them to shake or something. Right. Yeah. It's bad. Yeah. I know. So yeah, it's all so, well, you, yeah. you said it. It's uh it's a yeah. it's um gra- uh, freshman year uh, film it school is. short it film is. where it's like like the guy's gonna dress like he's in a silent movie with an ill fitting suit and it's yeah. it's in a land an, a landscape that's devoid of anybody and anything, but then he finds the little flower on the choo choo train, you know, it's just like <laughs> God. I, always got, <laughs> yeah. I got so annoyed by his office, you know, like it's like yeah. it's it's this big warehouse room with like a blue stripe painted on it and his desk is just like yeah. in the corner. It's like it's yeah. all very okay, stylized. that might be a, a good yeah. shot or it's just like implausible and everything about it just feels really implausible and unreal in like a not fun way to me. Yeah, and not trying to, that way. <laughs> like one of the subtexts is about that pudding thing, right? Like that the guy got all those oh, like pudding points yeah, or whatever. Yeah, right. Yeah. But it's like you take this real life story and put it in this like hyper real like gap, almost like a not gap, but like a uh, yeah, maybe not gap no, commercial. I feel, anyway, it's yeah, like, yeah, it feels like a mean. commercial, yeah, you know, like yeah, a hyper yeah. real like. It does. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's bad. Real quick. Quick anecdote before we get to Tom's first pick is this is a cringy like I, I'm I have to admit this on, on live air right now. But one of mm-hmm. the worst <laughs> things I was ever subjected to. And now this was in a former life, mm-hmm. different significant other from a long time ago. Oh. I was dragged to a at the Brooklyn Academy of Music, a punch drunk love live score with John Bryan that oh, I had to watch with a fake smile on my face. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> wow. Were you cutting like uh, the, t- the chair in front of you like with, yes. uh, with your keys? Yes. Like, like, yes. like, like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. just grinding down oh. on the wooden chair in front of you for like oh. two hours. Just That's rough, homie. Wow. Fucking awful. Well, let, let's let's it. keep going. Yeah, it's let's just I, sorry, I do want to. No, it's fine. I do. I, someone did shout out the, uh, the the use of the Popeye song, which I think is lovely. Uh, you know, uh, Shelley Duvall's song, but it's somehow in the context is so cloying and it's right. so precious and and it's so fey and it really is that kind of beginning of um, the very very twee two thousands of uh, what happened to like indie in so many ways. And he right. doesn't get away with it. And then the tiny other little observation is the neurosis is screaming and bleeding on the screen, and and, and I can't handle it. It's like just right off the bat, all the women in the film, all those sisters are horrible, excuse my language, cunts. They're just all <laughs> awful. Women, all women are awful, like all those sisters, except the, the beautiful, childlike, Lestrada, mute, kind of baby faced, cute, innocent girl. It's a very grotesque observation of like the opposite mm-hmm. sex for yeah. men. Yeah, really I the treatment of them to be really you guys bad. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, 
I thought it was really gross the way that they yeah. played all those characters. You know? Right, right, right. And the things that they would say to him just don't ring true. You know, like, remember when yeah. we used to call you gay boy? You know, yeah, like, yeah. It's know. like, it's so grating and like. Just brutality yeah. towards him. No, but yeah, yeah. really, the Popeye song is great. It just kind of ruins it. Yeah. And he thinks he's getting killer bullet points like, how you like me now? I just used the, the Popeye's uh, love yeah, song. Yeah, so I know. You didn't, you didn't get away with it. Just come out of Go away. Okay, uh, Tom, we got to get going. We're at 45 minutes. Tom, Holy your first shit. pick, please. Yeah. Okay, all right. This one's a real yeah. heartbreaker, and I'm still kind of torn with this one. But I'm being yeah. honest. Like, do, do I hate this? And it is, drum roll, please. Oh, I hate to say this, but it's yeah. Cecil B. Demented. Okay? <laughs> Let's say that again. <laughs> Cecil B. Demented. Now, this is John Waters. Of course, I truly, honestly love John Waters in every way. I have a signed copy of Crackpot. I have all of his books. I love all of his movies. I've met him. He's funny. I, if there's anything news about him, I'm reading it. It's just, um, that's, so this is almost like a melancholy heartbreak kind of thing. Right. And right. Um, even directors that we know and love, it just doesn't work. And I'll try to explain my problems with it. It's, um, I, th I realized it today when I was rewatching it. It would have worked, I think, if it was like one thread in a larger story. Like maybe in polyester, there's like, Oh. Uh, one of the, like the 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 the, the teenage son is like a, a foot fetishist or something like that. Like if this was a strain, because one of the problems is, is um, you know the the guerrilla you know like terrorist group of like like uh, avant garde filmmakers. Like it, it it really wears itself out almost immediately because in in reality what you're experiencing is ninety minutes of um, B list twenty something actors from the late nineties uh, yelling proclamations. Yeah, and that's it, and it just happens in a, in a loop and in a cycle, and it doesn't go anywhere, and and then they're they're whole, they're having hostage taking, and it just keeps repeating, and they're taking over this place with guns, and um, it also sullies things like you know the worship of of uh the it's like it hurts him, but then he also mentions like Kenneth Anger, you know, and um. Well, can we explain other, a little bit other directors? Like, so it, yeah, and yeah, I'm sorry. There's so no, much I'm, just, I'm well, unpack. Go ahead. I know. I'm just I'm just gonna explain just the loose plot if anyone's never seen this movie, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so it's it's this is '90s, right? Late '90s is that when this came out? Yeah, yeah, is like '99 yeah. or eight. Or something. Yeah. So okay. So basically, it's John Waters kind of rebelling against the big corporatization of film, you know, mm. and the plot is basically sees these like kind of ragtag punk trauma esque kind of group of got of, of guys and girls that are held uh, like held up in this movie theater and they're going to commit acts of cine terrorism um, right, to right. sort of, you know, basically take back independent film. And just real quick, I'm going to jut in and sort of say that, you know, it, Please. it, it, it does hurt me too, because obviously John Waters is a fucking, he's one of the best of all time. And, you know, legend, uh, legend is movies are incredible, but I, I definitely get what you mean. It's like, you know, everybody sort of knows like that there's a transition point in John Waters career, right? Like when he broke away from the movies that he's you know most known for and then, you know, money and stars, like other real actors are entering his work, you know, like not yeah. just the weirdos that he knows. Right. And Kathleen and just, Turner. It, right. Right. You know. And it just doesn't it doesn't work. You know, it, it doesn't really quite work. And I think that his heart may be in the right place with this movie in terms of I'm sure it to, is. Yeah. Make fun of things like, you know, Patch right. Adams, which is referenced in the movie is, and whatever. Yeah. But it's just that Dump. trauma yep. kind Dump. of like adolescent cringe yes. that this movie has. It's, it, 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 to me, yeah. it defines cringe. Like cringe, yeah. bup, bup, bug, look in the dictionary, and it's like um, a B-list 20 something actor screaming, like, uh, you know, like, I will die, if, you know, like, uh, you know, and bury me in the celluloid canisters. And it's just like, shut up. And yeah. I got two observations to maybe flesh this out. Um, on one hand, I think maybe he had this idea like in 1985, and it would have made a little more sense in the 80s, like, ah, fuck Top Gun and, you know, like all this stuff. But by, by the end of the 90s, one of the biggest films was Pulp Fiction. Right. And it's made by it's made by a guy who loves Sam Fuller and Peck and Paul. You know, it's just like like and that's a huge that was a huge impactful yeah. film. I mean, duh, Pulp Fiction. So it's like it feels kind of off. Like like the yeah. landscape, if you go to a a, a multiplex in that time, you're gonna see right. Jackie Brown. So it's right. like that doesn't, it doesn't work. Quite, then, quite work. Yeah. Right. Then the other little observation, and then I'm done, is um I feel like what he was talking about and imagining like like a multiplex taken over by crazies and they're naked and they're fucking and they're like shooting people that don't that did happen 
<laughs> like a year right. later when I Jackass know. was the number one movie. <laughs> right. Right. And he loved them and he was in like Jackass too. So, and I'm right. not even saying I love Jackass or anything like that. I'm just saying that that weird kind of revolution did happen in the multiplex. <laughs> there's guys like wagging their penises around and like shitting on the floor <laughs> and it's at the multiplex. So, right. so it's like, what are you doing? Also, my last, last thing is yeah. when you have a movie where they're going no craft services and then it, they go cut and you know that they're going, uh, what are the craft services today? And yeah. there's like lawyer, there's like lawyers and agents and unions and yeah. you know what I mean? And it's like, it's a very formal, real production about yeah. people being wild, out of control, cinema It's just freaks. out of touch. Yeah, it's kind of out of yeah. touch yeah. in well, a way all. that Natural Born Killers kind of is, you know, too. There's a similarity. Of, yeah. 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 Similarity. It's, like, it's really hard if you set yourself up to be like a critique on movies in general in your your movie is a critique of movies well then your movie better be fucking good right if you're yeah. like yeah that's Forrest true. Gump sucks <laughs> like you know yeah, we're right. patch adam sucks that's we're coming after is. you guys and if your movie really underperforms so that's in your i think that's subconsciously going on in your yeah. mind the whole time you're like well yeah. this movie think, is actually yeah. worse than Forrest Gump actually yeah. and you, you know, know the one before it pecker <laughs> is kind of a small film that's almost right. like in the welcome to the dollhouse kind of zone and i liked yeah. pecker yeah and it feels like he was kind of going into an interesting new neighborhood you know I and know you uh it was quieter and smaller and it had his weird quirkiness and it was maturing i guess is what i'm trying to say and then he just made this yeah. cheese fest that's you know what it is it's film threat the movie film yes. threat yeah, yeah, yeah. like chris yeah. gore the movie yeah. it's it, like it get just, out of it, here it just, great yeah. genetics but it is, but it does, it does break my heart, you know, to, to, to admit because, yeah. so I'm sorry, know, I'm sorry, John, John is, is, is the man, but he does kind of, he just, he does kind of take a, a page out of the trauma book, I think with that movie. And I think that's the thing that yeah. is pretty, pretty bad there. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. all right, Marcus, uh, what is your second pick? God, is it my turn again already? <laughs> yes. So, uh, okay. So. This one might be controversial. I've always hated this movie since the day it came out. It's only been a good 20 years in the making, though. So uh, Napoleon Dynamite, 2004. Oh. I really fucking hate this movie. I just, I think it might, I don't know. I'm glad to see you guys' reaction to it because I've never been sure if it was like a personal beef or what. But um, uh, okay, what good, Amy. <laughs> yeah, Matt. Great. <laughs> thank, I'm glad to hear that. I was a little bit on edge, you know, it just, um, <laughs> no, I, I feel like it's, on. it's to blame, you know, I blame this movie for so much of the bad shit that came later, yeah. like it's success led to Juno and little miss sunshine. And it really just like derailed in indie cinema into like a horrible, you know, alternate universe or whatever, you know, like, like, it's like we're in the wrong timeline where like indie film became Napoleon Dynamite and it started to suck. Cause like in the nineties, I feel like I had some promise. Like, you know, uh, you mentioned mm -hmm. welcome to the dollhouse. We did that episode on it. Like, yeah, you know, the fucking guys that were making this movie thought that they were making like a welcome to the dollhouse or something, you know, yeah. like, I'm sure they were inspired by it, you know, yeah, oh, yeah. but it's Definitely. like, it's just so empty. And it like, it's, it's the, uh, you know, it is just like almost like a prop comedy. You know, like mm -hmm. there's a couple funny lines here and there. I'll give it that. But like, it, it's like a prop comedy. Basically, mm -hmm. it's like moon boots, high bangs, right. interpretive dance, roller blades, like action figures, like, and then crystals. it's all yeah. um, crystals. It's all fake uh, out of touch, too, because it's like a lot of the things that it's like are being like, it's trying to pretend that a lot of these things are like small town people dress funny but he's like really dressed to the nines like hipster like right. he could go to any like brooklyn yeah. party well, and look like he was, he's uh, he's dressed like beck's bass player you know yeah he's like uncool looking <laughs> and, and you know? those t-shirts that he's wearing which are supposed to be like signified nerd in the context of the movie right. and right. for normies would have been like selling for like 90 dollars at buffalo exchange the year yeah. that movie came well, out yeah. you know yeah like uh, yeah and and I do think like it did like become it, it it's like the it's like the it it took Buffalo Exchange and made it Urban Outfitters. Do you know what I mean? Like <laughs> that's it, what it I'm took, saying. It took kind of yes. like digging yes. the indie world and then take it and then it just sort of distilled it in a way that normies were like, oh, I get this. Yeah. And then just hipsterdom just, became this thing. I'm not trying to defend hipsterdom, but like it yeah, just yeah. spiraled off in this. It was a commodification direction. and a crystallization. And an organization by corporations, That's brother, what I was say. of um, <laughs> yeah. of the hipster thing. It, uh, oh, you know, it's, it was like it was a ten year. It was the end of a ten year cycle when it's just sort of organically happening, and like someone like a Kurt Cobain would just go to a thrift store and go, 
that's cool. It doesn't quite yeah. fit, but it's like a woman's right. fur coat. Fuck it. Sunglasses. Well, right. And like, so yeah. 10 years later, it all got bought and sold. And, and I, I told you guys this Napoleon Dynamite, when it came out, I was flipping through like the local weekly and it had a full page ad and it had, you know, all these pull quotes and it was really presented like big, like there was money behind it. I could tell it was this big PR campaign. And I went, well, this isn't a small, weird little film. This is like probably like multi, a multi-million dollar PR campaign. I went, oh God, here we go. And of course it was a hit. And so it just felt, I just smelled a rat is all I'm saying. It was, it was very mm-hmm. cynical how it was being packaged. That's the word. That's the word. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. like, 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 you know, for me, I think it is kind of the perfect Marcus hate pick. Like I yes. was really, I was really excited <laughs> about it when you, when you mentioned it, because I totally get why you hate it, you know? And I think it is that commodification, you know, of, mm-hmm it you know authenticity like we i mean i don't know i grew up in suburban minnesota marcus you montana like we went to mm-hmm. school with people who were fucking like the real versions of these characters but they were so mm-hmm. much more nuanced and so much more like fucking mm-hmm. warped you know and it's like to see kind of like everything that we experienced and loved and was authentic and true and then just sort of being like swept up into like basically this is the beginning of the end of that this is the beginning of the end of authenticity you know, for mm-hmm. yeah. um, indie films and those types of things, like a movie, like if you go back and watch a Todd Salons or whatever, now it's just becoming, yes. we, we've always talked about the Xerox theory of authenticity. It's product. Yeah, it's product, mm-hmm. right, it's product. And how, yeah, like, it feels like these guys just do it to make, you know, for their own, to further their own careers. That like they, like, they weren't trying to make a movie, yeah. I don't know, to, no, like, you're... because they liked it, you know, it was like, they yeah. was, it was just a stepping stone in their own careers. The Urban career Outfitters, move. the movie, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So of course so, we're gonna hate that. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> like everything we're saying, like get yeah, out of here. I get it. I get it. I totally. Get yeah. It. It's a. It's a. It's a, a yeah. big Marcus pick. Yeah. Anything that else white on stripe it? song at the beginning, just like it's so. It just starts right out the gate, very twee. You know, I'm not like hating on that band at all, but like yeah. you know, that song just sets the stage for like yeah. being very twee and yeah, yeah, yeah. cringe and yeah. Um, <clears throat> It's bad. Yeah, I don't know. It's yeah, the beginning uh, of the end. It's like it's sort of, of like how you know uh, uh, how Matchbox Twenty is like the alternative rock, but they're like the third or like fourth wave of grunge, right. and it's just like, oh, like Bush. Yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. Bush is pretty far from sub pop, you know. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you know, there's like, many yeah, music analogies exactly. here we're making. You know, exactly, yeah. exactly. Urban Outfitters, the movie, absolutely. It is. Yeah, totally. That is it. Number number one, right? There. All right. Okay. We gotta move on. <clears throat> All right. Oh boy. Oh man. Uh, <laughs> This has been fucking rough, you guys. I don't know. I might need like I might need something here. Tom, uh, do you need something? <laughs> yeah, need this is. Uh, I'm feeling like uh, my 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 fingers are tingling and I I'm lightheaded. This is uh, this is brutal, and we're only halfway through this. You know. Is there anything I can get you that might like you know? Uh, maybe a little... Shit. Uh, <laughs> well, let's see, Doctor Doctor. I need ten CCs of a great movie. Okay. Stat. How, how about? 10 cc's of Fredo. You want 10 cc's of Fredo? Anything. Th- okay. That'll save my life. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> All is not lost. They're, great right. films have been made. They exist. <laughs> people see them. They it's inspire to people to make great films. They yeah. happen. Good movies happen. Good movies happen. Good movies happen. They're not all like, <laughs> like Napoleon Dynamite. Okay. Okay. I'm go. fine. I'm go. fine. I'm good. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. 10 cc's of Fredo. Thank you, sir. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Get ready. Strap in, guys. This is probably my length, lengthiest rant of the evening. My number two pick is kind of uh, of the a la flavor of Babylon. It's not, it is not Babylon, but it is of the Babylon ilk. Shout out to all you fans of our Babylon episode. But uh, in that episode, we talked about the phenomenon of auteurs gone wild. Okay. These new school filmmakers who are operating with no checks, no checks, no balances, you know, uh, total free reign of, you know, $80 million plus budgets and whatnot. So <clears throat> my film that I fucking hate is Nope from 2022, oh, <laughs> directed by Jordan Peele. So <clears throat> now <laughs> with this pick, I just want to be clear. Uh, I'm not trying to be contrarian. I'm not trying to be controversial or as Tom usually says, looking for trouble um, (laughs) because, you know, look, Jordan Peele to me, okay, was such a fucking funny guy. Okay. Super Mm -hmm. talented comedian actor on Key and Peele. Yeah, you love Key and Peele, right? Love Key and Peele. Um, I want to get that out. I want to get that that, uh, 
that Get Out was a fresh, interesting, mm-hmm. well-made debut. You know that yeah. really succeeded at being funny, intense, entertaining. I dug it. Uh, interesting social commentary, you know, whatever. Um, but guys, something has happened to Jordan Peele. Okay, something has happened to him. It appears as if he is shape shifted into a character that he would have played on Key and Peele, um, a pretentious <laughs> auteur. Okay, <laughs> with know. no self awareness, who is drinking his own Kool Aid. Okay, and with Nope and his previous movie, Yes, which, or, Yes, Us, which I also hate. <laughs> called nope and yes there's two movies <laughs> right, nope okay. and yes. <clears throat> um, with nope and us is you know when you watch jordan peele on the press junket tour discuss these movies it's like he's some I, I just i can't understand it he's like descended into this like freshman in film school level pseudo intellectual pretentiousness and making these films that are so shockingly ineffective and dull on every single level and, you know, look, I also want to be clear here. I'm 100% on board with all the social messages of his movies. I can get behind those. But these movies and why I hate them are just they're, that's not being effectively communicated through his filmmaking, like whatsoever, you yeah, know. And it's yeah. and the reason I hate Nope is not just because it's bad. Um, and this is my own criteria, too, guys. It might not be your criteria, but the reason that I really hate it is because everyone else on the planet is somehow convinced that it's brilliant. You know, critics think so, moviegoers right. do, you name right. it. Like, they keep enabling this, you know? And more right. on that in a second, you know? Because for me, watching Nope, it, like, it aims to be this high art movie with heavy social commentary, but it's also falling totally flat on just trying to be a horror film or a thriller film. It can't stand on its own two feet. You don't feel any emotion during the film, you're not invested in any of the characters. And for a horror movie, what you need, there's zero tension or zero feeling of excitement or fear. So it fucking fails there. And Us is the same thing, by the way. One fucking bad, ineffective, cliched set piece after another. And we're supposed to walk away thinking this is like this super thought-provoking movie with all these really important themes in it. And like Babylon, which we've talked about, you know, on this show before, the scenes mm. are fucking poorly written, they're lifeless. We get we never get to go know the characters. I feel so bad for the actors. They're given like nothing to work with. And then like JP is like in these press chuck and interviews, which I highly encourage everybody to check out, like where, you know, he's wearing these cringy like high fashion hipster designer clothing. He's constantly insisting that there's something smarter and more intentioned in the work. You know, now I will say if JP is fooling us all and this is some Andy Kaufman fucking performance art shit, like some <laughs> high level key and peel thing that I can't see, then he is a fucking genius. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. But the the main point of why Nope doesn't really work is because most conceptual genre films, high concept genre films, they they build their own universes, right? And they spend time to establish like what the rules and the parameters are of the universe. They help the audience like latch on to those rules and the characters. And so we can invest in the narrative. And so all of that can be, you know, effective and it can work, you know, but he doesn't have any concept of that. So he's just yeah. sloppily patching together like these concepts and themes without That's any the craft. word sloppy. Just yeah. like yeah, without any craft or nuance. And he keeps in reinventing the parameters as the movie's going along. So you're completely yeah. lost and you don't to what you know, you don't even know what's going on. So in short, like he doesn't know how to craft a movie, and he obviously also commits the major sin that Babylon does as well, too, which is where he tries to cash in on the emotions of the characters in the film that he hasn't even begun to fucking earn our investment. Yeah. Yeah. So he yeah. totally There's nothing's can, earned. Nothing's you know, uh, earned. like like they're strangers when you, when you first see them, and then by the end they're just strangers. You know, there's no character development. And I think what you were saying too is uh, sloppy. The, the what the what it is for me is like it's like there's three or four interesting ideas, you know, and then he just throws them into a pot and stirs it and hopes that something happens. Where it's almost like I th- you know, with the whole the whole thing about the killer monkey on the set of the uh, sitcom, right. which is the best like, part. Yeah, yeah, that's, I was kind of, you know, I kind of was checking in. I was like, hey, what's going on here? And then I thought about it. I was like, what if that was a 22 minute, like weird TV episode, you know, on HBO or something, some series he did. And then, and it's just, and so, so, because the fusion of that segment, which is kind of dynamic, doesn't work with everything else. It, It doesn't seamlessly come together. And I also, I keep, he's i think in the larger cultural context like you were saying i keep expecting something sort of surprising 
and rewarding from his films because of the context right. that they're in, which is that they're supposed to. So I'm always very open minded and I'm ready to, uh, yeah. you know, like uh, I'm ready for He's some so engagement with something. So a filmmaker who's kind of got so, a new take on things right, but by exactly. the end, like especially with Nope, I'm just like, well, that was just a, a stupid waste of time. And it's like like bad Oprah jokes and like um, mm. like one like punchlines, like visual punchlines and like ufos and like and there's no uh, tension or horror like or none, in the action none, scenes the none, action scenes have none. zero craft of like basic 101 film tension enough to where you're like but you do or... get a fry's electronics employee oh character, yeah so right that yeah. was like it's got some it's got some of the napoleon dynamite problems where it's like it's got these cutesy references and pop culture moments i mean he's trying to go for like art film but then it's yeah. like I guess Ooh. I guess a lot of modern art does that where it's like it tries yeah. to like connect people into like a humorous pop culture reference or something. Sure. But I just yeah. I don't find it to be it feels very forced here and it feels very I don't know, yes. it feels jammed in. You're like, right. And, 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 and weirdly everything feels jammed in. And you realize that the, all the everything that's jammed in is inside of nothing. <laughs> it's just like everything everywhere all at it's, once. It's yeah. odd. They're, I gotta say his films are sort of odd not interesting and not rewarding in any way but but they're they're a little weird that um they exist and that they are such a major thing in the cultural landscape you know well let me say that maybe he's got perfect. a good movie in him maybe he I, does well he did i, th I thought good out get well, out was yeah, good. no i like get out but, too like i'm but, another one but this is a good segue to my end on this okay because it's how did we get here you know kind of thing and it's mm -hmm. like you know after get out's like meteoric success i'm sure he spent a long time developing that and crafting that in his mind. Oh, yeah, but right after that, it's like he's been trapped in this vacuum of like sycophantic adulation and validation. So there's nothing stopping him. There's no checks or balances, right? And yeah. then the industry formed a brand around him overnight, which was also kind of yep. unprecedented. Like then you got his fucking Twilight Zone series. Holy shit. And <laughs> never saw it. Was it. <laughs> too, oh, my God. I'll spare you. It was too much really too good. soon, right? Oh, it's great. <laughs> Um, no. But it was too much too soon, right? And but you know, like yeah. I loved him so much from Key and Peele and everything, and really thought he was mm -hmm. a, a like a major talent. And this is like you know for me like a, a proper hate pick. And this is where my real hate is like directed on this. It's not really towards him. Mm -hmm, my mm -hmm. hate for this movie is directed at the fucking film critics. Okay, this right. is your fucking fault, guys. It should have been your fucking job to spot and report on this mediocre shit like this. You fucking goddamn cosplaying <laughs> posers. Not going to happen. That is your fault that this shit keeps getting made. Yeah. God damn yeah. it. 96% on fucking Rotten Tomatoes. All right, I'm done. Right. Yeah. Wow. And, and like, it's the same film that I saw. It's I it really is surprising. I need 10 CCs. Jesus, so we should move on, right? <laughs> I need, I need, we, I need, oh, I need sorry. something. I need something. Is there? Do we have ten CCs or something? Oh else? wow! Is it ten CC time? All right, let's go. That's Stat it. ten CCs of a great movie. Bring it in. All Bring right. it in, guys. Oh, I need. Show me the way to go home. Oh, okay. Here, here we go. Oh, I just needed Jaws. A little Jaws. I just needed a little the guy Jaws. singing in the galley in Jaws. Ooh, Jaws, Jaws is a good Jaws. movie. <laughs> Woo. I'm sure okay. Jordan Peele loves Jaws. Uh, okay. You know. <laughs> All right, needed that. Okay. Tom, what's your what's your second pick? All right, so uh, we're gonna uh, get really unfun now and go to <laughs> Europe. All right, B bear bear with me here. Let's go to Europe in the last ten years in cinema. Okay, so at first I thought this was gonna be repellent to me because it's a reboot, and reboots go so wrong so often in so many ways lately. Oh God! But this is uh, there's more to it than that. So I realized Suspiria reboots. <laughs> God. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> this is pretty great. Two hours, two and a half hours. Um, the, of course, it's a new adaptation of Suspiria, Dario Argento. Uh, it's uh, Argento. It's the first, I call it the first 80s movie. It's the incredible Technicolor, popping color, 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 incredible. Turn it yeah. to fucking 11 Goblin yeah, soundtrack. Awesome. It's not a real movie. It's a, like, you know what? It is kind of like a music video movie. But it mm -hmm. fucking rocks the Casbah, and it's just a crazy fairy tale, and it's loose, and it has scares. You were just talking about horror fails, like you know, it's Suspiria. Okay, yeah, it's, it's I'm not monster. even the biggest fan. Of, yeah, monster, I'm not even the biggest fan in the world of Suspiria, but it's it's yeah. fucking killer. Yeah. So you know, they had the bright idea. Let's re, let's adapt Suspiria. Let's keep the title, 
Mm -hmm. Let's keep the basic premise, you know, the girls <laughs> dance school and the creepy women who run it and the three mothers and all that shit. But let's have, first of all, let's bleed out all that popping blue and red and yellow colors, bleed it out. Everything is like winter afternoon gray, oh. like gray, 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 gray. And look, so what? Make an, make a decision, like do something. That's a curveball. Like, wow, it's Suspiria, but it's gray, you know, like, I don't really see the point in that, but if you feel like doing that, fine. But it's just like, what did we like in the first, like, like, can we have anything that we were liking about the first film, you know? And of course, then the soundtrack, Marcus, perk up here, is not Goblin, <laughs> but it's your pal, Tom York, Radiohead, going like, <laughs> not my friend. Nah, 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 nah. I'm in Cannes, I'm in a Krautrock band for a minute. Nah, 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 nah. Oh, oh, so, so there's that. So that's not exactly Goblin, not quite. <laughs> You know, like oh, disco. The contrast like, is stunning. That, yeah, yeah. that <laughs> goblin is gone. <laughs> you know, so okay, so 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 we lose we lose like huge elemental chunks to the original uh -huh. film, and then what do you get? So what do you get? And this is what kills me is I had I, in my former life I was you know working in programming in, in a movie theater, and I had to watch a lot of movies. You know, yeah, and oh, yeah. I had to watch a lot of European films. And at one point, like in 2013, 2013. I just said, what the hell is going on in Europe? Because I just watched the hundredth incredibly grim, like depressing, like shoot Sterile. yourself in the head. Yeah. Uh, huh? Sterile. Sterile. Yeah. Yeah. Just, you know, like bullhead. I mean, does anybody even know what I'm talking about? I really Bullhead. It. Yeah. yeah. Look I it up. Distributed yeah, that's that right. Movie, yeah. <laughs> anyway, that was one of the better ones. No, or like, or like uh, the lobster. Anybody? The lobster. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The other, the, right. the movie after Dogtooth. No, but okay. This is all I was saying to myself. is like, wow, <laughs> Europe needs a fucking hug. Yeah. So what I'm saying yes. is it's I know so what you mean. grim. Yeah, Suspiria is so yeah. grim and it's, 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 it's of a kind. It's this Italian director and it's just so grim and downbeat. And also it's this other thing that I hate. Like, it's, so it's suffocating is what I'm trying to say. It doesn't have any other um, like, like, like bouncing surprises of, of human life. You know, like yeah. no one like no one smiles. No one tells a little joke. No one has grace and like holds someone hand, someone's hand for a second. It's all just like dour or in a, an open sewer in a hell on earth, you know, and it's like grim and we have to pay the dues of our sins of our father and like, oh, and yeah. like, oh, and like die now. And it's like, now you die and the killers <laughs> die. And it's just like, come on, just fucking chill out for a second. So that's two and a half hours. More hate from Tom and I'll be done in a second. It does this other thing where I'm almost screaming for Dogma 95. And what I mean is Dogma 95, Dogma 95 was just reduce everything down. It was this right. uh, elemental. You know, dic it was a dictation, like bring it down, 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 down to nothing, nothing, nothing. And I've been thinking about this for years when I watch a film. I'm like, reduce everything. Go down, 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 down. What is it? Even a porno film. Like, it's like, like lose the sex scenes in a porno film. What do you have? Right. Dan, Dan, Dan. Maybe you have nothing. Maybe you have 25% right. kind of interesting film. Right. So this film is, what I'm saying is it's all artifice. It's all, everyone, no one walks across the room. They have to sort of dance. And then they have a weird angle for the dance, you know, and it's like, and then someone makes a face and there's a close up in the lighting. <laughs> it's all so expensive. And it all feels like, what was I calling yeah. it? Um, uh, what's that Italian label that's gotten in trouble? The clothing label? Balenciaga. Balenci it's Balenciaga <laughs> core. It's Balenciaga, yeah, it's Balenciaga horror. <laughs> so it's just, it's it's all very like expensive and European, yeah. and, but incredibly uptight and joyless well, and bloodless. And like it's they, all, go ahead. You know, like, the, like, you know what the original Suspiria was missing? It was Tilda Swinton, like in three different yeah. roles. One of them yes. being like this distracting old man makeup. Yes. You know? and, very <laughs> like, and when I saw it, I was like, Okay, wait a second. Are you guys thinking that I'm going to go, who's this old man actor? Wow. Yeah. I just went immediately like, <laughs> they oh, did it's that. a bunch of fucking makeup. It's Tilda Swinton is an old man. And it was I just like, and it wasn't. They, did, they tried to pass that off as a real actor. And yeah, like, yeah, and like the credits, wink, wink it's thing. not her. Yeah. yeah. And it's just like, it doesn't even work. So I could it's, go on, but, but these are, these are just sort of core well, things that I'm talking about where it's like, like there's nothing, it's hollow. That's what I'm trying yeah. to say. It's like there's this incredible facade that is a bummer, unlike the yeah. fun facade of Argento's film. But it's this bland gray facade with with just like a tiny little like peanut in the center of this like sarcophagus. It's just like there's nothing in there. <laughs> and then also bad choice that fucking woman 
who's so terrible. She's such a bad oh, actress. She's the God, lead yeah. from um, yeah. Shades of Gray. She's so Ramey bad. It's us. like Ramey yeah, knows who it's that like, is. Like this film. This film really Dakota needs performances. Johnson? Like, oh yes. hey, okay, uh, I guess I'll see you later. Yeah, you know, it's just like that woman cannot right. act. Whatever the hell her name is. Yeah, Dakota, Dakota Johnson. Johnson. Yeah. So so so, so that so so there's all these highfalutin people and this highfalutin performance by Tilda Swinton, and then this is just like really not up for it. American actress who feels yeah. just like I'm having coffee in Santa Monica. You know, <laughs> like, like, what is happening? It's so just it's that, terrible. Yeah. And I, uh, I was kind of pissed that you picked this one because I was. It meant that I had to watch it. Yeah. And this was gonna <laughs> be like. This is a film where I was like, I know this isn't good. I don't have to watch this movie to hate it. Like I hated it already. When the concept was announced that someone was going to remake it, I mean, I'm with you all the way. It's like the good thing about Suspiria was not the story. The story of Suspiria is just so blah anyway the style you know it's like Argento's style and Goblin that's it the story of Suspiria right. is like nothing and so it's just such a bald face it's got great attempt. set pieces though yeah what did, no what I did, love Suspiria no, no, sure. no, I'm cool. just saying the story is not good it's the story is not what I would adapt you know like right. yeah, yeah, it's, it's not about think, the like, story of the three it's mothers it's a weird reason yeah, so it's, it's just like it's tale. just playing off of the name which is right, like right. what everything is these days right. and this right. is just exactly. one of the worst yeah and I was very very cynical it's like like just call it something else don't say this is a Suspiria adaptation it's just like you know like the dark corners of my psyche you know like call it something else last thing what did Argento say Argento did not like it. He said it was boring <laughs> and lifeless. Yeah, he didn't I, I would. True. I would be totally fine with a movie like that, just borrowing a lot from it. You know, being inspired mm -hmm. by it and just being mm -hmm. something different. And, you know, and new. But obviously, it wouldn't have an audience, and no one would. Well, give David a shit. Gordon Green was supposed was... to do it. Remember, <clears throat> that was like the rumor back. Yes. And it was yeah. that? Um, but was it like David Gordon Green and Danny McBride or something were supposed yeah. to be involved? In yeah, something like that. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's bad. It's, it's 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 high high fashion. It's like fashionista uh, horror, yeah. and it's Balenciaga it's horror. Balenciaga. It's unbearable. I dare you. It's unbearable. It's the ending bad. is especially Bearable. brutal. That's the worst part. The ending is the ending is in fucking insane. Okay, we got It's up there with Annette, which was also in my short list. <laughs> okay. Annette, the one with fucking, know uh, you know, what's his name? Anyway. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, Moving on. Uh, we have to move on. 13 minutes left on the clock. Marcus, what's your third oh, pick? Okay, so uh, my third pick is Birdman from oh. 2014. Oh. <laughs> we have a, do we have a, any CCs left? Okay, hold on. We need a CC before you get into that. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do much more of this. <laughs> okay, okay, I need some help do here. Doctor, 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 please give okay. me the news. How about this? I got 10 CCs of... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mike Nichols, Mike Nichols, Dustin Hoffman. Some, okay, they make they do graduate? make good movies. They do make yeah, good they movies. Do. They do. Yes, oh. okay. the, uh, that ex that is that exists. Okay. okay. So, all right. All right. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay. Birdman, like it's oh. crazy that the Academy was throwing all these awards at this movie. It is. <laughs> Didn't it one Best Picture, right? Like, oh yeah, I think so. But yeah. everybody, yeah. nobody has mentioned it since i haven't heard anybody mention no this one. movie yeah since, nobody since 2014 no. and it's really um, fast yeah. I, <laughs> my, my theory just a tiny theory is it, it it was out of favor almost immediately because it's about like an angry old white man yes so it's just like like no one wants to do that now yeah yeah when trump mm -hmm. came in no, it does feel really out of place now especially i mean it's yeah. stunt filmmaking I guess it's some sort of technical achievement. It's not the only long take movie, of course, yeah, but yeah, you know. Yeah. But I feel like that's what I was watching the whole time. It's just I'm watching the long take techniques, you know. But yeah. then, like the movie itself, like what's happening, the characters, the dialogue, the story. It's also angry and grating, mm. and and the first line of the movie is like yeah. it smells like balls, you know. And like if that's yeah. in the trailer, they're really leading with that, like it was funny or something. A lot of the dialogue, there's like all this cross talking. It, it sounds really awkward. Yeah, it sounds it, to me. Like it feels like a, like a foreigner trying to cuss like an American. You know, <laughs> right. like fuck to you, you know, or something well, fuck like it. Your feels fart too, buddy. You know? Yeah, yeah. It feels <laughs> oh, very. Oh, yeah. It's not that bad, but it feels. It has that feeling. Yeah, like yeah, it feels yeah. just like wrong, so it doesn't ring true. And then it's trying. It's pretending to make some sort of profound statement about fame or superheroes or comics or something. I'm not sure, but it's like, it's not at all. It's just pretending the ending is this big mishmash that just is totally meaningless. You know, like the ending, like he shoots himself in the face and then 
he becomes relevant in the news again and gets some his nose followers. Off. And then, yeah. and then yeah. like, he's like, he's been imagining Birdman <clears throat> the whole time. And like the, the Birdman's on the toilet and he's like, I'm not going to listen to you anymore. And then he, he flies out the window. And I think you're supposed to be some sort of like, you know, it's supposed to be some sort of meaningful philosophical moment. Yeah. It's just, but I think they were just like, let the audience fill it in. You know, they'll think it's it's something meaningful because they're not. I don't think they're actually trying to say anything. Well, it's it's more but, busy, jazzy bullshit to kind of distract you. Like when you don't have yeah. it's this is a through line through almost all this stuff. When you don't have anything, you just kind of go da 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 da, and you tap dance and you go like, oh, yeah. it's all long takes, and it's like again. Remember what I was saying earlier? Yeah. Reduce. What Reduce, if this yeah. doesn't have any long takes? Nothing. Out. What yeah, is right. happening? You know. Nothing. Yeah. Also, nothing. my cheap side note. This is all I have to say about this film. Batman. Okay, Batman. It's a comic book. Bat is an interesting animal. It's a creature. And a man who's a bat is kind of interesting sounding. But this is Birdman. And it doesn't translate because Bird is a, you know, is a large group. It's not Hawkman. Inside the animal kingdom. <laughs> that. So it's just like <clears throat> Birdman. It doesn't it's just like if it was mammal. If Batman yeah. was Mammal Man. Or yeah, ma- exactly. <laughs> it's just like why didn't they at least go like Falcon Man? Well, it's like, not Hawkman. Birdman. Classic. What? You know, they're trying to make it like a Hawkman. I think, which is like you know a classic DC character. Shout out to my comic. You know what I'm saying? There. Birdman. Yeah, yeah. I know it's terrible. <laughs> I was Birdman. just like. Yeah, when it came out, I was just like, God, everything really does have to be about comic books. And that was 10 fucking years ago, you know, know. and still know. everything is I know. still. I know, it's true. Yeah. It's okay. Hey, it's all right. I don't. Yeah, of course. Um, okay, real quick. That the, the, the music, same problem with Punch Drunk Love. Like, Fuck, you told me. Like, the yeah. fucking music is so annoying in this. In you Bird stole my Man. line. I was going to say, I was going to say, don't bury the lead, Marcus, because. We have two <laughs> movies tonight that feature wow. incredibly loud wow. jazz freestyle drumming <laughs> that bury the dialogue. That and, exists and, to annoy you. Like, I know. What else could it be doing? You know, but but to like yeah. make you on edge. Like I know, but it Birdman, is. It's trying to put you on edge. Yeah. But Birdman cranks it up a notch and do? goes goes one step further with its fucking jazzy drumming. Is that it? Also uh, decides to synchronate cringy slam poetry dialogue guys oh, that that goes perfectly <laughs> over the drumming so nice. it's like all this like <laughs> this like street busking vibe that the movie like, has which is awful pissed off old white man word oh, jazz like it's terrible but shit. but let's not but like to go with the superhero character the bird man character bird that man. fucking voice he's doing like hey i thought you <laughs> oh, were, no. you're, 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 you know that whole time yeah, that yeah, is yeah. fucking the worst that's the worst part of the movie is his you're right bird Man voice. It is. Yeah, it's yeah. terrible. Oh, All right. Why would he just do his yeah. Batman voice? You know. I don't know. Just I, yeah. he, sense. he was Batman. I don't know. <laughs> terrible. Okay. Um. Real quick. Right, I'm gonna juice. forfeit. I'm gonna forfeit again. I I I had forfeited my third choice. Last okay. ep. Just because I'm looking at the clock. So I'm gonna save okay. my third choice for a future episode. Spoiler alert. It's a real banger. Uh, you know, definitely <laughs> we're going to get that one next time. So Tom, why don't you start with your third, but then let's leave a little room at the end right. so we can do a say something nice challenge challenge. Right. Just challenge. like last time we're doing the near impossible, the say something nice about your pick challenge challenge. All right. Well, this is okay. This is a little bit of a curveball. I wanted to open this up to you guys. Sure. Uh, and have a kind of a group discussion about a general topic. And earlier I was saying that uh, when I was doing film programming uh, in the last 10 years, you know, I have to see a lot of like annoying foreign films. But more than that, I saw a lot of annoying American indie films. You know, it's I was like, I'd have to go to Sundance and like I was up at 9 a.m. Me like, too, brother. I was right there with you, man. I would, I would run into this guy. Dude, it's you like, and me you both. Watch? Hold on. You, no, you, you'd, you'd come out and you'd be like, I just did mural and, and the dead girl or whatever, and it's like, oh, <laughs> no, no, no. You and me would be at Sundance, partners in crime, walking out right. of movies, fucking left and right. We were we were savage up there at at Sundance. But go on. Yeah, go yeah, on. yeah. So, so I'm just, I'm just, I, I something. I just wanted to address this, this, um, this currency of film, uh, and um, they're all kind of forgotten, and they're they're like there's like two movies every year at Sundance that are remembered, and then there's everything else. Right. So two, I, two that kind of stuck with me a little bit are, um, I'll just mention a few, and, and we'll get out of this kind of quickly. Yeah. But and I, if you guys have any submissions, just even just like a title and a quickie, yeah. My one of them is Thoroughbreds <laughs> from like 2017, and it's it's like two like super cool girls like 
high school girls and they're really rich and they just sit around in the sofa and are like let's kill your dad and it's like <laughs> god totally and it's like right you know and that's like the whole film like this this like deadpan cool high school girl fantasy fulfillment of like what if we like we killed people and we got <laughs> like i know right and that's like the entire film the tone of it is that's all it is it's called thoroughbreds fuck uh, that movie so and i remember i was just I, you know it was like towards the end of sundance and i was just like i can't take much more of this you know like we're talking now about all these films and oh they suck and i need 10 cc's but i need 10 cc's on like day 14 at, 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 at sundance. <laughs> so the other one the other one was kind of late in the game was uh really impossibly awful it's the other film about Christine Chubbuck, who was the uh, newscaster. Right. It's a true story. Amazingly, she shot herself in the head on a broadcast in the morning news. It's insane. And I've actually always been fascinated by that story, and I researched the shit out of it. And yeah. it really is an engaging, fascinating, strange story Great of Christine story. Chubbuck. So they did make a real film, uh, like a you know a bigger budget uh, indie film. But then at the same time, that whole group, and I'm going to get into it. Evan, help me out here. That that sort of like Kim's video mafia. <laughs> uh, Alex Ross Perry, oh. you know what I mean? Like all those guys. And one of those guys made um, uh, Kate Plays Christine, yes. which is like that actress. I'm forgetting all the names tonight. Sorry. But like that actress, if she, if this actress, Help us out. Kate Plays Christine. What's her name? Kate Sheel. If Kate Shield's in a movie, Thanks, run. Randy. Like she's in all <laughs> the pain, most pain in the ass indie films from like 10 years ago. And now no one cares about her. So, so that one is, um, that one got laughs out loud because the film is building. It's a terrible fake uh, documentary about like the actress who's conflicted yeah, about portraying, you know, a Christine Chubbuck, the woman who really did shoot herself on TV. And it's like, how, you know, she's dealing with the, the, the issues, the thorny issues. And she's trying to learn more about Christine. But the big thing at the end is like, they set it up where it's like, well, here's the end of the movie. Here's the end of Christine's life. And so the actress is like, puts the gun to her head. And then she, she's about to shoot herself. She's on the news in the reality of the, this film that I'm watching, which is depicting what really happened. And so then he, she stops, doesn't shoot herself. And she just points the, the gun at you and goes, what do you fucking want? You want to uh. see me blow my brains out? What's your fucking problem? We all laughed out loud. Yeah. <laughs> sure is not what they were hoping for. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Uh, it's just that. Yeah, yeah. I have a million Sundance films I could throw out, but I think because of the time, we got three and a half minutes left. We'll save some more Sundance titles for another episode of uh, Movies We Hate. Yeah. But, yeah, sure. okay, let's quickly rapid fire this, guys. <laughs> Say something nice challenge about all three of your movies. Marcus, we're going to start with you. Go one by one. All, all three of your picks. Go. Uh, okay. Uh, God, Natural Born Killers. It's really fucking hard. I, am, I think that uh, it was nice. I saw this actress, Olan Jones, pop up in it. Oh, like she's on. Okay. Um, she plays the organ player in Edward Scissorhands, who's like okay. the sort of Christian lady, Esmeralda. Okay. okay. And she was in it, and I was like, oh. Hey, there's there's that actress, and that was she, nice she walked by behind a car, <laughs> pretty much. And then Mark the Harmon movie. does some um, there's some fake reenactments with Mark Harmon that was like kind of like funny for a second, but okay, I mean, next, really, quick. No, there's, okay, so um, Napoleon, Napoleon Dynamite. Uh, God, I don't <laughs> really. Uh, I, I I guess I okay. So I always liked I kind of like Reno Nine One One, you know. And there's that uh, act, that okay. comedian Kyle Dunnigan was doing that character Craig. You right. know, he's like kind of like okay. introvert. And when okay. I was watching Napoleon Dynamite, I was like Napoleon's brother, Kip. I felt I was like, oh, I think this is where Dunnigan got his Craig was. I think he started with Kip. Oh, anyway, okay. so that was okay. in my head. All right. Um, and Third then man. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I, I like Naomi Watts. Um, yeah. And I guess I, I like her a lot. And I think maybe it's it is smart. Sometimes when people can cast someone from the real world that like will you know, the, like Michael Keaton's story in real life has some impact in the movie. And I think that is kind of an interesting move when people do right. that, but not in the context right. of this film. So whatever. Okay. All right. Punch drunk love. Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, <laughs> honestly, this is an inverse to you guys. Okay. I actually think the only scene in the movie that I think is bearable to watch is the scene where he goes to visit his sisters. Um, and I just, there's something about him being alienated from those type of characters that I think would have just made a better movie in general. 
like just across the board, make the movie with him and featuring his sisters more than the tiny piano. End of story. That's my say something nice challenge. <clears throat> on that, wow. nope. Uh, the say something nice challenge I kind of teased on nope is I I would basically say the scene you know where the monkey attacks the, stu- the live studio audience is probably his most effective scene since Get Out. Um, and I just honestly, you know, given what he's trying to say with the themes of, of Nope and everything that he's trying to communicate, I just felt that like that movie about that would have been just so much more effective. And I think that that's the best scene in the movie and that should have been the whole movie. Tom quick, sorry, 45 seconds go. Yeah, fine. Okay. So, uh, uh, what am I? Says will be demented. It has someone vomiting at a screening of, um, of uh, Patch Adams. Yeah, How that's can, a pretty, I love that. Pretty hot. Suspiria <laughs> reboot. Um, I did like, there's some archival footage of those German terrorists, and sometimes the Krautrock sounds okay uh, that Tom okay. York does. And okay. then um, uh, K-, K-, K Plays Christine, uh, um, the, the production company of the, for the film is the name of uh, the, the, the news program where the woman actually killed herself. Suncoast Digest, I think it's called. Okay. That's it. That's a pretty specific. <laughs> pretty charitable. Yeah, that's pretty charitable. <laughs> I love that. I thought that was cool. Uh, all right. Yeah. And three, two, one. Bomb. All right, everybody. <laughs> Holy that was Christ. Jesus Christ. You know what, guys? I might need 10 cc's of Fredo one more time. Yeah. Real quick same, after that. Same. You broke my heart. <laughs> okay. Ah. Uh. Broke my heart. <laughs> much better. I'm much smart. Better. I'm smart. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. okay. So that was one fucking hour on the movies we hate part two. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us here on the first yeah. ever one Hope fucking hour fun. live stream. That was a blast. Um, that was, was so crazy. much fun. It's crazy. crazy. I can't believe we blitzed all that and we got it in. Um, and so it's yeah, like, it's like nine. It's like a whole hour of cramming in nine terrible movies. Yeah, and I know. a lot. But maybe, like, but re- maybe don't forget that we spent like eighteen hours watching know, them, rewatching like them again. Maybe next time we pick like two with like a possible third if we have time. Yeah, maybe like two each, just to maybe. have because there's there's plenty of hot topics to expand upon. Yeah, we're we're bringing up interesting stuff in my opinion, you know, and we could uh, go a yeah. little longer. You know, movies. Movies that had Hot Topic t-shirts at Hot Topic, for sure. We could talk more about those. Um, Okay, so I had a blast. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Real quick, there's a couple of things I just want to talk real quick before we wrap things up and we get to the moment. You're going to want to stay around for the moment. Trust me. Um, First things first is uh, we have a new announcement to make, of course. We have a second big announcement, and that's going to be what the future programming We've kind of sketched out several weeks, like the next 20 weeks we've scheduled out. So we want to give you a little teaser to what we're doing. It's kind of a cool little concept here on the show. But before I do that, I just want to shout out one more time to y'all that we started the One Fucking Hour Patreon. I'm going to put the link uh, in the chat here. But yeah, so uh, we just launched this tonight. If you missed that at the top of the show, you can subscribe to the One Fucking Hour Patreon for just $5 a month. And it gives you uh, 24 hour early access to every single episode. But it also is the only place you're going to get these guys is we're doing fucking audio feature length audio commentary tracks to the movies that deserve it for good, good movies, movies we love, movies we fucking hate, like some of these tonight. So the yeah. only way you're going to get the audio commentary tracks is if you subscribe to the one fucking hour Patreon. And guys, just a few days ago, we recorded our very first audio commentary, which was to Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original, and that is up there right now. You can watch, and we had a fucking blast. It was like really just awesome. So if you want to oh, just so hang out, fun. yeah, if you want to hang out with us, you know, watch movies with us. This is the way to do it. Um, yeah. How does that work? Up? Like, uh, like uh, the Patreon. Um, once you do it, you get a yeah. link or something. That's that right. Simple? So. Right. So when you when you sign up for the Patreon, you'll see all the posts there for all the different commentaries that we'll have. There's only one right now, but we're going to try to get to at least two a month um, on there. And uh, there's an MP3 you can download of the commentary with syncing instructions to the movie. Uh, and there's also a video version where you can watch us watch the movie and sync it up oh, to great. Uh, the, the movie as well, too. So pretty simple to do that. So definitely get in there and watch that shit. Get sign up for the Patreon. But just five bucks a month. Come on. How can you go wrong? All right, so um, 
Okay, the big announcement. What's next for one fucking hour? How are we doing this? This is very exciting, guys. So we are on episode 66 right now. The episode you were watching is episode 66 of the show. So next week, of course, will be 67. What we are going to embark on from now until, I guess, October, until we run into one fucking Tober, where we're doing the horror film right, marathon. Right. <laughs> so from now until Octo uh, um, October, every single episode is going to be about a film from the year that corresponds numerically with the episode number. Okay? So we're going to start next week with a movie from 1967 for episode 67. But there's a other little fun gimmick that we're uh, also imploring on this, which is you guys, the viewers of the show, get to vote on which film from 1967 and beyond for the rest until October, you know, 68, 69, 70, 71, mm -hmm. that we cover on the show. You get to vote. So we've picked four movies that we are going to put up on a poll on our Instagram story. So I'm actually going to post this right now, but we should tell the people which four movies Six. it is. Um, so I'm about to hit post on this right now. So you can head over to the Instagram uh, story for one fucking hour at one fucking hour on Instagram and vote between these four movies. All right, Tom. So maybe we can just give a quick blurb for each of these and why it would be a compelling episode. Um, mm. So the first of the four choices that you guys can vote on is Jean-Luc Godard's Weekend. Our first Damn. Godard film y'all is weekend i mean that's gonna be fun we're gonna get into some fucking godard goes crazy hippie right yeah well i mean uh you know we were going back and forth about like um how like gilded and gaudy and and overly elaborate uh a lot of european art house has been getting lately and this thing is talk about reduction it's just like reduced 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 in that context um but it's wildly creative wildly inventive wildly yeah. challenging upsetting ugly strange almost psychedelic yeah um and and very coarse and with a lot of friction but it's still just it doesn't have like a lot of dance numbers and tom york like you know <laughs> so uh <laughs> sorry tom york i'm sure you're listening but uh yeah. no anyway no weekend's a big classic for in in godard and then um in in, in 60 cinema i mean it's it's a movie that last title card is end of cinema yeah awesome so cool so cool and of course uh didn't we lose uh, godard this year or was that late last year it's it's recently. within a year it's yeah within a year so earlier this year or late last year or something yeah he's yeah. he's no longer so with that, us and uh that's so a monster be, we haven't done godard yeah that'll be sweet uh number two option number two if you want to vote for this one is of course <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's one of the 10 cc's today. <laughs> it is, yeah. It is, of course, right. Mike Nichols' monster fucking huge-ass big so cool. 1967 Classic monster. Classic set pieces. The Graduate. You know, just yeah. all the ways to make a killer film. To make a film with, uh, <laughs> you know, like such memorable scenes, <laughs> right? Like, yeah. it's, it's just like, like one memorable. It's like, how about him in the scuba outfit, can't hear his family and just goes, submerges himself? I mean, what the fuck is that? You know, yeah. Soundtrack Jack says most end. boomer movie ever. <laughs> that's what Jack says. <laughs> All right, yeah. that's well, cool. Let's fucking boomer let's, out then. Let's. let's so that's one of the four. <laughs> that's one of the four. Well, it's 1967, so let's yeah. let's think about what we're it's saying. Right in the pocket. <laughs> right in the pocket. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. The third option you can vote for um, at the one fucking hour Instagram story that's posted right now is in cold blood. Oh my god, the Dude. amazing fucking adaptation truman capote Dude, true crime incredible incredible film and book the first and, true crime book really yeah you know yeah and yeah. so brilliant it really is and uh yeah, yeah. so brilliant rich scary mid-60s deep black and white yeah talk about tom's robert reduction blake. theory like yeah you know uh and robert, robert blake's Blake. performance both both those guys their performances yeah. um yeah incredible and a harrowing story it's it's a horror movie in a way it is, as it much is. As mm -hmm. super so, effective yeah. incredible movie so that could be one of the options the fourth option somebody actually called out in chat already which i'm pretty excited about <clears throat> is um a trip back to um we've covered this filmmakers movies before we've done deliverance we've done zardoz mm -hmm. That's right. So we're going back. This will be our third John Borman film that we've covered That's on the right. show. And that is Point Blank from 1967, starring Lee Marvin. Just an absolute yeah. 
like talk about like a, like now we're getting into like the modern age of cinema here yeah. with uh, a movie like uh, Point Blank. I mean, this movie, just its style, its editing choices uh, are things we could go to town on. I mean, it's just it's it's really, really a fucking badass movie with just impeccable style. Um, great, tough ass, you know, performance from Lee Marvin. Yeah. I kind of feel like we should call up Lars and get Lars on the episode if 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 if, if Point Blank if he, wins. Yeah. And if you we know, don't do it now, we could do it later. You know, we will. You know, outside of this competition yeah. stuff. Um, yeah. yeah, so there's the four yeah. choices, y'all. That's it. So get on the Instagram now, our story page, and you can vote for Godard's Weekend, The Graduate, In Cold Blood, or Point Blank. Get on there and do the voting to decide our fate for next week. Um, all right, everybody. Well, I think we should wrap it up. Thank you guys so much again. Uh, get on the Patreon yeah. if you're not on there now. Um, and, and vote on for next week. Uh, but we can't leave you guys. Of course, we cannot leave any of you without of course. your beautiful, wonderful moment of <laughs> zen. <laughs> wow, a live moment. <laughs> a yeah. live moment. That's pretty trippy. Yeah, this it is, is going out live, y'all. It is. I don't even know what they are. Let's yeah. all find out. Me neither. Yeah. yeah. So we got some live moments we're going to watch with you guys. And so, what's up, Andrew? Thanks for joining the show. All right. We got some live moments for you guys. Um, and again, we will catch you next week and whatever you guys pick is our next episode. So hell yeah. Right. Let's All hear right. it from you guys. Okay, everybody. Thank you. Good night. And we will see you again on the next one. Take care. Bye, everybody. Bye. Why are you asking me about harmoniums? <laughs> You know, I walk into this thing going, oh my God, I'm going to get to do a film score with oh harmonium. I mean, it's been one of my favorite instruments since I was a kid. I got introduced to it as a kid and loved it. I Just loved it. Moment. <laughs> Look, this is a society of the spectacle. And I think that uh, the, the, the idea of spectacle um, harms us in many ways, whether it's something we are so obsessed by that we um, we give it too much power because it's uh, it has a spect spectacular nature to it, or if it's because we use the spectacle to distract the, ourselves from the truth. We have this very uh, very uh, dark relationship with it, and I I, I moment yeah. natural born Next. killers. I think uh, it's my anarchic uh, you know damn the torpedoes kind of all out attitude like you know we're, we're not going to live with this hypocrisy we're just going to blow it out at the end of a shotgun fuck it moment at points i was <laughs> cringing i was wincing i was laughing mm -hmm. i was confused i felt such a combination of emotions is that what you want that is that's like the best review to me is it you want to take us on that kind of journey yes motherfucking goddamn orange peel beef <laughs> Wicked, man.